Hello everyone, it's Mr. Wolf here and in this video I'm going to be going over page 20 of the 2019-2020 uh, Unit 1 Physics Packet and specifically I'm going to be introducing velocity versus time graphs. All right. So thus, at this point we've only looked at position versus time graphs and there's other types of graphs as well so we could have the velocity versus time graph right. and sometimes students will look at graphs like these and they'll all see the same thing. And your brain naturally goes to look at the pattern, right? That we see this line going up. All right? And so the shape on both of these graphs is exactly the same, but these are not saying the exact, these are telling two completely different stories. So the motion of this object is not the same of the motion of this object because we have different y um, axes. And so it's really, really, really important to not just guess on the motion based on the shape, but to really understand why an object is moving the way it is based on how the graph is labeled. So let's create a velocity versus time graph from a position versus time graph. Uh, I'm going to start at time zero. I'm going to start at time zero. Uh, sorry, I'm going to actually start at time two here. So time two. All right. And if I go up and over, my position is 10, but I'm not looking for my position. I'm looking at my velocity, and there's nothing that's clearly labeled velocity here. However, velocity, the units are meters per second. And the units of my slope here, meters for my y, as for my x-axis, is meters per second. So it looks like, so it looks like that my it looks like my slope of this graph literally is my velocity. So in this case, if I find my slope, I go up 10, and I go to the right two. So my slope is five, right? So specifically, it's five meters per second. All right. Now, if I go to the next data point, it looks like the slope is the exact same at this point, at this point, everywhere. So my velocity at every single point is constant. It's 5 meters per second. So if I translate that over to my velocity versus time graph, here's 0. This could be negative 5. This could be 5. Uh, at time 0, my velocity is 5. And as time increases, my velocity stays at 5. So it's just a horizontal line like that. So notice this object, these graphs are talking about the same object doing the exact same thing, but obviously since we have different types of graphs, they're going to look different. So let's look at another example. Right? I'm going to find my velocity again from a position versus time graph by looking at the slope. And in this case, I go down by 2. So that's negative 2. And that's over 2 seconds right here. And so my slope is just going to be 1, but it's going to be negative 1. And that's important because my you can have a negative velocity and all that negative, and by the way, I'm making the same slope here because it's the same, or same velocity here because it's the same slope the entire time. You could have a negative velocity because the negative doesn't mean that it's, it's a velocity that's less than zero. It just negative means that that object's going to the left, right? If I have a number line right here and this is zero and this is 10, all right, it starts at 10 and then as time increases, it goes to eight, six, four, you know, two, zero, it's going to the left in this case. We would say in physics terms that it's going in the negative direction. So if I'm going to graph this, uh, well, if this was five before and this was negative five, well, my negative one would be somewhere here, right? My origin being there. Uh, at time zero, my velocity is negative one, and as time increases, my velocity remains at negative one. So you get something like that. All right, the last graph. So for this last graph, uh, we have a position versus time graph. I'm going to look for my slope again. And anytime, going back to algebra, you have a horizontal slope, your slope is going to be zero. So my velocity is zero meters per second. It's almost like I'm saying I'm going at zero miles per hour, zero kilometers per hour. I'm not moving. All right? And that makes sense because if I tell the story of my graph, as time increases, my position, my object was at four. All right? So maybe it's up here at four. And as time increases... It stays there. Right. So if we transfer this over to a velocity versus time graph, well, here's zero. At time zero, it's at zero meters per second, and it continues not moving at all. So it just stays on that x-axis. Right. So this x-axis is actually really important for uh, gaining a good understanding of these velocity versus time graphs. Right. Uh, I, th I think something that makes sense is that the fact that this line is above zero, you're like, oh, yeah, it's further up. It's going faster. That makes sense. 
Right? However, I would say that if I have a line, let's say here, that's at negative 7 here, this line right here is representing an object going faster compared to this one, even though it's below or down. When you, when you see or think below or down, you're, you're thinking less than, right? But for this graph, right, the way I like to kind of represent it is I like to put a dot where the origin is and draw a triangle going up. And do the same thing with the triangle going down. All right? So this is just a, a way to kind of keep track of things and not get fooled by these graphs. Is that this the thickness of the line represents how big the velocity is. So obviously as I go further from the x-axis, right, my line's getting thicker, which means my velocity is getting thicker. If I go down, right, my line is getting thicker, which means my velocity is getting thicker. Right? These negatives right here, they don't mean less than at all. All they mean is that my object's going to the left. All right. So if I had an object that's going negative 5 meters per second and 5 meters per second, they're, doing, they're going the exact same speed. The only, difference is this, the only difference is this one's going to the left, and this one is going to the right.